Hi everyone, I'm Ting An Ye, a second year graduate student from National Tsinghua University. The topic I will present today is Cook Share, a framework to manage GPU as first class and shared resources in Container Cloud. This is joint work with my lab mate Hong Xin Chen and my advisor, Professor Jerry Zhou. In this talk, we will first talk about the motivations and objectives of our work, then detail the design and implementation of CookShare. Finally, present our experimental evaluations, followed by conclusions. Over the past few years, Container has been widely adopted in cloud because of its advantages over virtual machine, including fast launch time, higher deployment density, this performance degradation, just to name a few. As shown by recent surveys, most of container clouds are based on Kubernetes, a container orchestrator developed by Google, which can hide infrastructure details from developers and provide several automation features like shelf healing, rolling update, serving discovery, and load balancing to speed up the CI-CD process and downsize management efforts. The basic execution unit in Kubernetes is pod and we will use it as an exchangeable term with containers for the rest of the talk. On the other hand, GPU has been the driving force to achieve high throughput computing through massive parallelism. Applications like deep learning have shown more than 40 times performance speed up on GPU compared to CPU. But GPUs are expensive, and they are often underutilized during the code developing phase and off-peak service hours or because of data transfer and company bottleneck at host site. To maximize GPU utilization, one of the most effective approach is to provide GPU sharing so that multiple underutilized GPU applications can be consolidated on fewer number of GPUs. However, enabling GPU sharing has many challenges. CUDA provides test parallelism on GPU, but only from a single process or application context. Recent research work on GPU sharing aims to improve GPU throughput and fairness, but not from user resource allocation aspect. More importantly, Kubernetes is lack of support to provide GPU sharing and isolation in its resource management, nor does it trade GPU as first-class schedulable resources. First-class resource is important in resource sharing context, which means that user can request specific GPU devices for their parts, but it is not supported in Kubernetes because the binding between GPUs and pods are implicit and late. Like the example here, the scheduler only schedules pods to node. Then the node daemon will then decide which GPU on the node will be assigned to the pod. As a result, the binding happens after scheduling, and the scheduler cannot control the binding result. Two major problems may occur when GPUs are not first-class resource. First is performance interference problem, a known Performance degradation may occur due to resource contentions between jobs sharing the same GPU, but the degree of degradation can vary depending on the application workload pattern. For example, given four jobs, A, B, C, D, running A, B on the same GPU may cause much higher performance degradation than running A, C together. Hence, performance interference can be reduced if we have control of GPU assignments. The second problem is resource fragmentation. GPU sharing can cause fractional residual capacity, but the scheduler is only aware of the aggregated resource capacity of the node, not individual devices. Therefore, GPU sharing can cause invalid scheduling decision in Kubernetes. Like the example here, the residual capacity on node 2 is enough to host part F, but if part F only requests for a GPU with 0.6 capacity, it cannot obtain sufficient resource from either GPU 3 or 4. Hence, resource fragmentation must be considered by the scheduler in order to support GPU sharing. In this work, we propose an implemented Coop share, which extends Kubernetes to provide first-class GPU scheduling and address utilization, fragmentation, and interference problems. To achieve our goal, Coop share is consists of three main components: a scheduler to deal with fragmentation and interference problem, a device manager to create BGPU and provide GPU identity. Finally, a device library to control GPU usage and allocation during part execution. In the next part of the talk, we will detail the design and implementation of CubeShare components. First of all, before introducing CubeShare components, let's take a look at how GPU is natively supported in Kubernetes using a device plugin framework. The following is the workflow of NVIDIA GPU device plugin. 
Say a user submits a part that requests two GPUs and a node has four GPUs. Kubernetes scheduler schedules the part according to the three GPU count on every node without knowing their GPU identities. Then Kubernetes scheduler updates the results to the cluster state, node 1 for example. The daemon in node 1 receives the update, then the container is ready to be run. According to the GPU request in the part, node daemon decides the GPU binding to the part. Say it chooses GPU A and B in this example. Then node daemon sends an allocate request to an NVIDIA GPU device plugin. Then NVIDIA GPU device plugin returns an allocate response, telling node daemon to set the environment variable NVIDIA visible devices equals to A and B in the part. Finally, node daemon launches the container with proper environment variable setting, and the NVIDIA container runtime restricts the visibility of GPUs in the container accordingly. So the part can only access GPU A and B in this example. As can be seen, the device plugin framework allows a custom device plugin to provide the necessary information for a node daemon to attach a device when creating a part. So the scheduler and node daemon don't need to deal with the custom device directly. However, it also forces to delay the binding decision between part and device. As a result, the binding decision is implicit and late for scheduler and GPUs are scheduled without identities. Next, we will explain how the device manager in KubeShare resolved the problem by managing a pool of vGPU devices and provide GPU identity for scheduling. The purpose of device manager is to create and manage vGPU, which is a logic GPU resource entity that can be shared and identified in KubeShare. So it can be fractional allocated by users, and its resource allocation and usage will be controlled by KubeShare. Device Manager creates vGPU using native parts. Then the parts are created by going through device plugin framework as we explained. So the Device Manager is compatible with the existing GPU device plugin framework. But different from before, the Device Manager maintains a table to record the mapping between UID and GPU ID, where GPU ID is the identifier of a vGPU assigned by KubeShare and UID is the identifier of a GPU returns by device plugin. The UID of a vGPU is retrieved after the vGPU part is created, while the GPU ID is assigned by KubeShare, and it can also be used at scheduling phase to collocate parts on the new created vGPU as we will explain later. The group of shareable GPU managed by KubeShare is called vGPU pool. After showing how vGPUs are created by device manager, we explain how a vGPU can be shared among shared part. Shared part is a custom resource kind ranged by KubeShare to let user create a part attached with vGPU. For example, here an user submit two shared parts with GPU demand 0.4 and 0.6, and the user can request the two shared parts to share the same GPU by giving the same GPU ID, XYZ for example. Upon receiving the user request, Device Manager first queries if the vGPU named XYZ already exists. If it does, Device Manager directly creates a part with the corresponding UID in environment variable without going through device plugin framework. If the vGPU named XYZ doesn't exist, a new vGPU is created and assigned with the GPU ID XYZ, then perform the part creation step. Since the two parts have the same GPU visibility, they can share and access the same GPU as requested by users. Notice, KubeShare is compatible with NVIDIA GPU device plugin management because the GPUs outside of vGPU pool still can be acquired by native parts going through device plugin framework. For instance, GPU D can be used to run the native Kubernetes part without being affected by KubeShare. Therefore, KubeShare provides the flexibility for users to choose how they want to attach GPUs on their parts and causes minimal impact to the existing cluster management. After knowing how vGPU and shared part is created, the life cycle of a vGPU can be divided into four phases. vGPU 1 is in creation phase because it is just created and joined vGPU pool. vGPU 2 is in active phase. It is attached to part 1. vGPU 3 is in idle phase. It is detached from all shared parts and not assigned to anyone else. Finally, vGP4 is in deletion phase. It is released and is deleted by KubeShare and leaving vGPU pool. When to delete a vGPU can be controlled by Device Manager, 
If a VGPU is deleted immediately after it becomes idle, we say VGPU is managed in an on-demand manner. If a VGPU keeps idle in VGPU pool, we say VGPU is managed in a reservation-based manner. On-demand cuts longer part creation time, because VGPU may need to be created before being assigned to share part, but the idle VGPU can be released to Kubernetes for more flexible resource management. In contrast, reservation-based strategy can reduce part creation time, but idle VGPU cannot be used by others except Kube share. In our implementation, we choose on-demand, because our experiment shows the VGPU creation overhead from Kubeshare is limited. Next, we explain what resource requirement can be specified by users and how Kubeshare schedule GPU resource according to these requirements. Kubeshare scheduler schedules pending share parts requests from users by deciding their GPU ID node name according to user's resource requirement. Kubeshare provides rich and easy to use specification for users to specify their requirement on GPU allocations. In terms of resource usage, scheduling locality, and GPU identity, we have seen how GPU ID is used to identify GPU. We will introduce how GPU usage is controlled among parts later. So here we explain how the label of locality requirements can affect scheduling decisions. Kubeshare supports three types of locality labels. First is affinity. It forces the containers with the same label to be scheduled on the same GPU. For example, if SharePart 2 and SharePart 5 both have green label for affinity, they must be scheduled on the same vGPU. A use case of affinity requirements is to let jobs with higher communication and data transfer among them to be placed on the same vGPU, so better performance can be achieved. In opposite to affinity, Anti-affinity forces the containers with the same label to be scheduled on the different GPUs. Again, if SharePart 2 and SharePart 5 have the same anti-affinity label, they cannot be scheduled on the same vGPU. Since SharePart 2 has been scheduled on vGPU 1, SharePart 5 has been scheduled on vGPU 2. Anti-affinity can be used to avoid parts with higher resource contention to be scheduled on the same vGPU. So the performance interference problem under GPU sharing environment can be mitigated, as we will show in our experiment. Finally, exclusion is used to exclude GPU sharing among containers with different labels. For example, SharePart 5 can only be scheduled to vGPU 1 because vGPU 2 has shared parts that label in red. Exclusion can be used to dedicate a GPU to specific user or applications. It is a commonly seen requirement for performance-sensitive workload. Lastly, we will introduce how our device library can provide resource control and isolation among the parts scheduled on a GPU. In our approach, the GPU compute resource is shared in time domain, while the GPU memory resource is shared in space domain. As shown, the compute usage rate of a part is measured by its total usage time within a sliding window and the memory usage of a part is its total memory allocation size. Next, we explain how we control the compute and memory usage of a part to match its user requesting demand. To control GPU usage without modifying user code, we use LD preload to intercept CUDA library codes from parts and limit their usage by blocking the resource usage codes until the resource limit can be satisfied. The intercepted codes are shown in the table below. To allocate compute resource in time sharing manner, we implemented a token based scheduler to coordinate device library so that only the parts processing the token can issue its kernel launch command to GPU driver. Finally, to maximize GPU utilization under workload variation, Kubeshare provides elastic allocation to allow users to specify their resource usage requirement by a range bounding between request and limit. For instance, the table shows the request and limit of job A and B. At the beginning, only job A runs on the GPU, so it can use up to its limit 70%. After job B arrives, the capacity will be shared among them with minimum usage request guarantee. So job A will reduce its usage from 70% to 40%. Once job A leaves the GPU, job B can increase its usage to 80%. Therefore, elastic allocation can guarantee user requests while maximizing GPU utilization. In the last part of the talk, we present the evaluation results. Our evaluations were conducted on AWS Public Cloud cluster with a total of 8 GPU nodes and 32 GPUs. We compared the results between two Kubernetes platforms 
one with our Kubeshare extension, one without. The workload for evaluation is a TensorFlow inference job, whose GPU resource consumption can be controlled by addressing the number of clients. The main performance metrics are application throughput and GPU utilization. First, we show the system throughput improvement from Kubeshare under various workload patterns. When job frequency increases, Kubeshare can execute more jobs at the same time. Thus, the throughput also improves. When the job frequency is too low, there is no resource contention, so GPU sharing has no impact. In the second plot, we adjust the average usage demand. As expected, smaller jobs offer more GPU sharing opportunities, so Kubeshare has more throughput improvement with smaller jobs. In the third plot, we adjust the variance of usage demand, but it shows limited impact of the results. Overall, Using Kubeshare can always improve throughput, especially for heavy-loaded systems with small jobs. Next, we show the average utilization of all GPU cards during workload execution, indicated the red and blue line. Kubeshare almost doubled the GPU utilization of Kubernetes. A better resource efficiency allows Kubeshare to complete the workload in shorter time using fewer of numbered active GPUs, so GPU sharing can save both computing time and cost for users. We also conducted an experiment to show the performance interference problem can be mitigated by our anti-affinity user requirement. Here we pick two types of job, A and B. Job A has a much lighter GPU workload than its requested demand. So job A can run with other jobs without causing too much resource contentions. But job B has a heavy workload. So running to job B on the same GPU causes significant performance degradation. Therefore, we can use anti-affinity requirement to avoid GPU sharing among jump B and mitigate interference problem. But notice, anti-affinity could also reduce GPU sharing opportunity. Hence, using anti-affinity doesn't always achieve the best performance as we will show next. To study the impact of anti-affinity and performance interference, we adjust the job missing ratio between A and B in our workload. When workload only consists of job B, Using anti-affinity results in worse performance than not using it. This is because no GPU sharing is allowed in this case. And the throughput benefit from GPU sharing can outweigh the performance degradation problem from interference. Kubeshare without any sharing can be even slightly worse than Kubernetes because of the overhead shown in the next experiment. However, when the percentage of job A in the workload is high enough, Kubeshare with anti-affinity can achieve the best results by fully utilizing GPU while minimizing interference. Finally, we evaluate the overhead of GPU sharing, especially in the worst case, Kubeshare needs to create a vGPU before creating a shared pod. So the pod creation time of Kubeshare can be doubled compared to the native Kubernetes. But this time delay factor is constant regardless of how many pods are created at the same time and the actual time delay is only a few seconds, even when we created 100 parts at the same time. If we choose reservation-based vGPU allocation, the overhead of Kubeshare is reduced to only 15%, so we believe this overhead is very limited and acceptable. Another overhead of Kubeshare can come from the time of scheduling. We describe our algorithm in the paper, and the computing complexity is linear to the number of parts in the system. So we observe the scheduling time from our experiment matrix to the theoretical analysis. And it took only 400 milliseconds to schedule 100 parts, so our implementation is scalable. To conduct our work, Kubeshare is the first work that makes GPU becomes first class and shared resource in Kubernetes. We propose and implemented a series of techniques to address the utilization and performance interference problem in this resource sharing environment including locality-aware scheduling, elastic resource allocation, on-demand vGPU creation. And users are able to specify their GPU resource requirement with respect to usage, locality, identity. Our system design ensures Kubeshare is compatible with existing Kubernetes components and NVIDIA GPU device plugin management. Our experiments prove Kubeshare can significantly improve GPU utilization and system throughput with little overhead. Our implementation is available on GitHub, and any feedback to our work is welcome. Thank you for your attention.